We are now going to uh, plan work for uh, a culvert uh, over at the coordinates uh, 2,700 metres. Uh, to do so, uh, proceed to the Insert Object Toolbar, clicking on the Insert Task icon, and using uh, the Tylos Explorer, click on the plus symbol next to the uh, Canalisation folder, and by choosing in this specific case uh, the culvert as a task, Moving over to uh, the main working area, using your uh, left mouse button, draw or drag, for want of a better word, the, uh, the task to a duration of, uh, of 34 days. And uh, you can see that the task uh, is graphically appealing because we have basically over here in the preset toolbar, we can see that it has coordinates 2700 to 2750. We have done this intentionally, although the actual distance length is uh, zero meters, but we have uh, agreed on the 50 meters width because it makes it uh, graphically appealing. If we uh, then go to the details toolbar at uh, the bottom of the screen, we can see that it is a, a normal task type. We will change this to a summary task because this will then allow us to uh, apply the, the top-down planning method for the purpose of, of this exercise. So by returning back to uh, the actual culvert, if we click on the right mouse button and by choosing Open Summary in Gantt Chart, we're now in the, uh, the Gantt Chart view and uh, by just going to the, uh, the spacer, drawing the spacer over to the left hand side of our page, this will then give us a more appealing approach to our main working area and it will also give us some room for manoeuvrability and some room uh, to work in. We are now going to uh, create a summary uh, with the help of uh, predefined tasks and the uh, easiest way to do this is using the Insert Object Toolbar. So if I click on the uh, Insert Task icon and moving to the bottom of the Insert Object Tool by clicking on the Insert Lock Tool. This enables me to choose as many tasks as I like uh, without having to go back every time separately to the Insert Task icon. So if we choose, for example, uh, Diversion, and by dragging this task uh, along the, uh, the bar lane, and basically just going back to the, uh, the Tylos Explorer to choose the, uh, the task that I would like, I can continue to, uh, to plan graphically using my mouse. I will then choose uh, pipeline. That's an S, the next task. And uh, it is also possible, this is worth a mention here, that um, tasks can also be uh, inserted in the, uh, the same bar line. For example, the diversion. If I would like to insert uh, another diversion, uh, in the same bar line, this is possible as long as the actual diversion itself um, is actually meant to be in the same creek uh, as uh, the first one. It is also worth mentioning that uh, the, uh, the values, um, the coordinates uh, that I have defined here uh, will also be portrayed and displayed uh, in the time location uh, diagram. And uh, if I want to uh, complete my summary, I will do so by choosing the backfill. And uh, let's not forget to go back to the Inset Object Toolbar and uh, basically unlocking our locking tool uh, again. If I click on the, uh, the main working area, I can see that I have created a summary in a hierarchical order in my and chart without having to type in any information whatsoever without using uh, my keyboard purely aided by my mouse. We are now going to link formally unlinked tasks in a very swift and effective manner. If we uh, use our left mouse button to drag a rectangle around the task that we have inserted in the Gantt chart, by releasing the button and clicking on the right mouse button, by choosing the option Linked, Unlinked Tasks, 
we can see now that the formerly unlinked tasks have now been linked with one another. And if we proceed to the details toolbar at uh, the bottom of the page, we can actually determine the lag between each specific task too. I'm now going to show you how the Gantt chart and the time location diagram interacts with one another. Let's proceed to the uh, main menu, uh, clicking on window and uh, choosing tile horizontal. We have uh, successfully split the Gantt chart view and the time location diagram view into two separate screens. Now the reason I'm doing this is uh, very simple. Let's click on the, the lower part of the screen for a moment, which uh, depicts the time distance uh, view. Um, I would like to uh, show the culvert because uh, this is an important exercise visually in showing you how both the Gantt chart and the time location diagram actually interact with one another, i.e. when certain changes have been made above in the Gantt chart, they will be automatically updated and displayed in the time distance diagram below. The best way of showing you the visual impact of, uh, of any changes uh, is to uh, click on the working area in the uh, Gantt chart and by choosing uh, the backfill task, basically by uh, moving the task either backwards or forwards, you can see how the visual impact is portrayed and displayed in the time location diagram below. Let me just repeat this for you, just in case you, uh, you missed it. Please uh, look at the culvert uh, in the time distance diagram at the screen below, and you can see that uh, any graphical changes uh, made in the Gantt chart are automatically adopted in the time distance diagram below. Now let's look at the uh, interaction between the time distance diagram and the Gantt chart. By clicking on the, the plus symbol above the culvert, you can actually uh, open the, uh, the summary as uh, shown above. And uh, if we proceed to uh, the bottom uh, of the summary, uh, by clicking on uh, backfill, we can then show you that uh, the interaction uh, in the time distance diagram uh, is basically identical to the interaction in the Gantt chart. Uh, so if I uh, basically change the, uh, the distance of my, uh, my backfill in the time location diagram, it is uh, then automatically changed uh, in the Gantt chart too. So uh, this is a very easy way of, uh, of keeping track uh, of any amendments uh, you make in either one or the other view. If you uh, use a larger monitor, for example a 25 inch monitor, you can basically view uh, different parts uh, of your project, different views uh, of your project and again you will never lose track of any amendments you make. So let's uh, close the, um, the Gantt chart view and uh, open the time distance diagram view and uh, we will then go to the uh, the main uh, toolbar and we will choose the 100% screen view size before we proceed on to our next lesson.